Well, welcome back, Drill Freak Nation. We're going to go into an episode here that I really, really like. I enjoy this, actually, because one of the things that we're going to see is from generations from Hogan to Sam Snead to Jack Nicklaus to Tiger Woods to Dustin Johnson. And I just, it's a broad spectrum, spectrum of names right there. But uh, one of the things you're going to see in a lot of those players is a very definitive squat as they move into the hitting zone. Very powerful move, and my son Corey here is going to demonstrate it after we're done discussing it a bit. Uh, but it's also very inherent in Corey's swing from, from a young junior player now playing professionally uh, as well. And um, so, Corey, that being said, one of the things that we see in the modern players now, it, it was done way back when, and that's that squat position. You know, they use the ground for leverage, and that's, again, a, a very strong move um, as you move into the hitting zone. So just tell me a little bit about, like, like your feel. What do you feel? Uh, maybe you don't even feel that. I'm not even quite sure, but I know it shows up even, when, even till this day in your swing. Uh, it's there, and, and again, you use it uh, as a great attribute uh, for your golf swing. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mentioned it's, it goes, it's a technique used from players Old, uh, back in the day versus the modern day players. Um, and the two main reasons why I've incorporated it, one was because it was a huge influence uh, from you teaching me as a young player. Um, I was obviously not, I'm not the tallest player, so to help generate power, um, he taught, my father had taught me how to use the ground as, as uh, leverage and use the ground forces to create speed. And what I mean by that is being able to properly, um, properly make a little bit of a squatting in your downswing. Um, so Corey, let me ask you something. Just, I'm going to move out of the camera a little bit here. So if you went to that position there real quick, and we're going to get into the video, I noticed as soon as you squat it though, that lead hip was already turning towards the target and moving around you. So there's that little bit of a little, both the squat there's, and the turn is right. kind of... There's a sequence that's involved and in any good golf swing, there's always a little bit of a shift towards the target and some rotation first. Got it. Um, and or simultaneously, right. both the shift and a squat at the same time. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. You, you, the first things first is let's start clearing clearing out of the way, and as that happens, that will then incentivize you to, to really use the ground to squat and then, and then raise up a little that's, bit. And that's, that's a great move to, to, to incorporate. That's actually in drills, too, and I talk about this early on. That little simple move that Corey just showed you right there, that's a drill. That's a drill. If you're a professional person and you're in an office and you want to just close that door and work on your game, you can just do just what Corey just did with nothing, nothing in your hand other than ingraining that little position where, where that lead hip goes back a little bit and there's that separation in knees. We're going to get a chance to see what Corey looks like doing that drill, only we're going to add a little bit of a dimension. We're going to put a little foam in there between his knees and we're going to use a swing trainer here. So have a look and I hope you guys enjoy it. As my father mentioned earlier, there's a very simple drill you can do that you could start incorporating the feel of what it is to properly use the ground uh, as leverage and generate and generate speed. Simply using a, a basketball or even a foam roller, cut the width of your the width of your thighs, the inside of your thighs. I like to use the training aid as well. That way, even though I'm working on my ground forces um, and and proper, you know, creating speed, I also want to make sure that my my golf club and arm structure, hand structure is being worked on as well. So I like incorporating with both training aids. But the drill is very simple. Placing a noodle in between your legs. You can do this with a golf club or without a golf club, but again, I prefer to use both. Go into your back swing, maintaining the same pressure so you're holding it. And on the way down, your first move down is to just let the noodle go. So you're separating the legs a little bit, that little squat, providing some pressure into the ground. And as you approach the golf ball. Well, I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, I want to thank my son, Corey, for explaining a little bit of that move. And again, um, I've watched him from a junior player right up to playing professionally. And that certainly is a very powerful move. So that's something that... 
uh, you would certainly would want to incorporate in your golf swing. And really all it took is just a little cutoff noodle here that Corey placed between his knees. Something just, just want to add to uh, doing it this way, because I know there's balls out there that you can use to perform that drill. But in using this little noodle, we found out, both Corey and I, that you really, really have to be cognizant of keeping your lower, your lower body a little bit more still or in a static position, keeping that lead knee target side uh, from, from moving away from the target. So it's actually helps you a little bit even in the backswing too. So hope that helped and we're going to catch you guys next week on our next episode. Stay tuned.